about the... Uh... Sure. I mean, one of the things that people uh, have assumed, um, and I think assumed to, to myself definitely, is that because I was in the military, I'm Republican or I'm conservative. Um, Rob, Rob says it really well. You know, a lot of people in the military are conservative, small c. You know, you, you're traditional. You are, there's, there's history in what you do because of the military. It's about service. But the, uh, the fact is, it's really complicated when you get in the numbers. It's definitely not a Republican organization. Um, I mean, one of the things we just had, uh, the, the general um, who just resigned from Afghanistan even said, as he was resigned, he actually, in the Rolling Stone article, he talked about voting for Obama. There are a lot of folks out there that, uh, a lot of young veterans especially are coming back progressive. And if you look at just the numbers, the majority of veterans under 60 voted for Obama. So coming back to the values piece for a second, um, this, is a, this is a good slide because it, it, uh, it really sums up some, kind of the, where, where progressives in the military can butt heads. Um, and I, I use the example, um, and not to dig up our, our salacious 1990 history, but if you look back at what happened with, with President Clinton and the Monica Lewinsky stand, scandal, where many supporters of President Clinton took a defensive line that said, well, what he did in his private life uh, has no bearing on his response, on his role as, as president or his professional life. Uh, you know, that, that was sort of a defense as opposed to uh, the attack saying you know, he had, he had um, um, offended the office, et cetera, et cetera. And contrast that with what John just mentioned of two weeks ago, where we had General McChrystal uh, publish, where an article in Rolling Stone was published about General McChrystal, which, as it has come out, in, in fact, he really didn't even say much of the stuff that, that was attributed to him, and it was his staff. And within 36 hours, you have a four-star general in charge of a major theater of war removed from removed, and his and his career ended. L look at the different accountability aspect of that, and how inside the military, this concept of, of total accountability is fundamental. Um, anyone, any commander uh, can tell you, or anyone that's that, that's that's led uh, troops uh, can tell you. That, that that accountability is fundamental. And that's where this, this headbutt can come in, where the military community can see progressives as just too soft, just too flexible, too willing to cave in on, 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 on their belief structure. And vice versa, the, the progressive community can look at the military and say, it's just so rigid, it's just so, so they're all standing at attention. I don't, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't even know how to penetrate this veil. But the fact is it also applies to the, to the, to the conservatives too. Uh, um, I mean, what the policy implications of what have transpired in in Iraq and now what we what we see as eight wasted years in Afghanistan um, have really decimated uh, the military's trust of of the right uh, and and their ability to make good decisions and not come across as reckless. Uh, the last thing I'll um, I'll talk about here um, are a couple of key points um, where if you're reaching out to the military community, whether, and again, as John mentioned in his opening, really regardless of the topic you're talking about, um, we've done some of our military one-on-one -on -one training for uh, the Climate Action Network, for the National Organization of Women, uh, for young Democrats around the country. Uh, it really doesn't matter what community you're talking to because in a time where um, men and women of the U.S. military are engaged around the world, it's, it, and it, it, it's a constant theme that people want to know these issues and want to reach out to the community. Here's a couple of narratives, a couple of themes that you really want to talk about. Um, the concept of serving the underprivileged. Um, you, anyone in the military will tell you there, there's this concept of, of officers eat last, uh, about the, the man and woman on my right or left are more important than myself. It's about my brothers and sisters that I'm serving with. That is a very progressive statement. Uh, I mean, think about our own social policies and what we're trying to accomplish as progressives and, and take a look at how that, that brother sisterhood uh, within the military. If you, if you haven't seen the movie Restrepo yet, which just came out, it's a Sebastian Younger documentary. documentary. Uh, I highly encourage you to see it. It's about a platoon uh, on the front lines in Afghanistan. And you will see firsthand what a tight-knit progressive community of, 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 of men taking care of each other and making sure everyone's taken care of. Um, leave no one behind. Again, an extremely progressive thought about, uh, I mean, again, coming back to our own social beliefs as progressives, uh, about reaching out to the downtrodden. Uh, that is a, you will hear in time and time again that, that, that the military, when, when someone's injured or someone's uh, killed in action, that we leave no man behind. Uh, we, um, we believe in doing the right thing. Um, 
that, that, that merit and, and achievement are to be rewarded as opposed to um, birth and, and class and, and wealth. You can't be born into being a general. Uh, you can't be born into being a four-star admiral. You have to spend 25 years working your way up through that meritocracy to get there. Uh, and again, so those are, those are themes we all share in common.